Hi everyone! I found a perfect picture for spring coloring and it's a picture by Meredith Dillman. I will be coloring in my Coloring Haven magazine, but you can also find this picture in Meredith Dillman book Foxes and Fairies. This picture is called Peach Blossom and for the first layer of color I decided to give a try to my Faber-Castell Art Grip watercolor pencils. I don't have a full set, I only have six of them, but I quite love their quality, so I decided that I want to use them, especially because one of the colors I own, and it's number 130, is the perfect salmon color to lay as a basic color for peach flowers. After I colored a couple of first flowers, I decided that maybe I will use water for them, because they are watercolor pencils, but then I decided that it's just a lot of time for me, because these pencils, they work quite nice both with water and in dry mode, so I decided that I will use them as regular pencils. If you don't have them, you can use as a basic color deco pink or deco peach. And for my coloring, I decided that first I will select three basic pink colors, like deco pink, then pink, and then carmine red. These three colors, they are quite similar, they have the same hue, they are just different in their darkness. But you can get these colors by just varying pressure on one pencil. So the, these three colors I will be using to create a gradient on the petals. The middle part of the flower will be darker and the edges of the petals almost white. But in order to make my flowers to look more interesting, I also will be using great lavender to indicate soft shadows from petals and you know that peach flower consists of couple of layers of petals so upper petals will be casting shades on the lower part of the petals and for this I will be using great lavender but also I will be using additional color salmon pink from Prisma Colors and it has a distinct orange hue into pink and it will be a nice addition. Carmine red I used for adding contrast in the center of the flower and later I will be adding some spots using my Faber-Castell pit pens in Caput Mortem color. I tried to make edges of petals quite pale and later I smooth them with a white pencil. For tree branches I used three shades of brown from very pale beige sienna for the thinnest branches and for the most highlighted part of thicker branches via sandbar brown which is a mid-tone for me to espresso which I used to indicate the deepest shadows where the fairy is sitting for the bottom part of the thick branch and also for the areas where flowers partly cover tree branches. For the leaves I tried to select natural looking but bright green, so I stopped with olive green and for edges I added lime peel and apple green for some leaves. I deliberately selected very close colors for the peach blossoms and I also tried to vary pressure on the pencil. So in this way I got this impression that similar colors are floating one into another and I have pale and pastel colors but I think has a play of light 
and shades on each flower and you can visibly see which part is closer to the sunlight and where one petal cover another and it's sometimes it's tricky when you color very pale or even white flowers but if you use your pencils wisely and if you after cover your black lines you still can get a quite realistic looking coloring and I plan to cover black lines later. I have a similar picture from Barbara Lazza coloring book Fairy Lane and there I have a fairy among the apple blossom flowers I believe but you know that I am not a huge fan of paper in Barbara Lanza book and here paper is much better and also I really love this kimono on the fairy and I am quite eager to color it so I decided that it will be better and more interesting for me to color and I highly recommend you to look at Meredith Dillman coloring books I think that they are amazing one of the most prettiest fairies I ever seen in coloring books. I hope to see you in the second part and happy spring to all of you!
Thank you. 